Did somebody say feed? Hello fellow CNC nuts and welcome. Today we're going to be having a look at feeds and speeds. Let's start from the beginning and figure out what feeds and speeds are. Feed rate is how quickly the cutter is pushed through the material by the CNC machine and you set this in your CAM software when you create the toolpath. Speed is the RPM of the spindle. There's a basic formula to calculating feed rate. Feed rate is the spindle RPM multiplied by the number of flutes on your cutter multiplied by chip load. So what's chip load? Chip load is the thickness of the chip removed by one cutting edge of your cutter. This is measured in thousands of an inch and can be obtained from the tool manufacturer if you're lucky. I say if you're lucky because looking for this information I only found data from two tool manufacturers. While most manufacturers will provide recommended chip loads for steel and other metals, they generally don't provide it for wood. Fortunately, we're at a bit of an advantage here because wood is a much more forgiving substance than most metals. That means it's less likely to damage your tool as quickly as if you were cutting steel. Now, chip load for any given cutter is determined by many different factors. The length of cutter, the diameter of the cutter, the material the cutter is made from, high speed steel or carbide, the cutter's design, spiral, straight flute or V-bit, the material you're cutting or the depth per pass to name but a few. Feed rate is important. If your feed rate is too slow for the speed your spindle is running at, you will generate heat as the cutter sits and rubs on the stock. The result is burning and the heat will quickly dull your tool. It's a good way of fooling people into thinking you've got a laser though. If your feed rate's too fast for the spindle speed, you're liable to break your cutter and you'll also get a poor finish. The correct feed rate will give best tool life and best finish to your cut and if the cutter is running correctly it won't get hot. So as a practical example here's a 75-280 Onsrud 2 flute down cutting spiral bit. I have here several charts for this particular cutter cutting various materials, MDF, hardwoods, softwood. The chip load can go from as low as two thousandths of an inch to as high as nine thousandths of an inch depending on the material I'm cutting. If I look up the data sheet for MDF and go across to a 57-200 uh, series cutter I'll see that my chip load can be between six thousandths of an inch and eight thousandths of an inch. Now I'm going to run my spindle at 10,000 RPM and if you want to know where I got that figure from then there it is there. I just have to pick a speed and 10,000 is as good as any. I usually start with 10,000 I find it a good value. Next I can calculate my feed rate. Now if you remember feed rate is RPM by number of flutes by chip load. So that's 10,000 by 2 by 6 thousandths of an inch or 120 inches per minute for the lowest and 160 inches per minute for the highest chip load. The recommended depth per pass for this cutter, according to the data, is the diameter of the cutter itself. If I want to do a half inch pass, then I need to slow down the calculated feed rate by 25%. 
and for three times the diameter by 50 percent. Now the calculated feed rate is a good starting point for machining your project. I'd pick a speed in the middle to start with, let's say 140 inches per minute. Now mine will have no problem doing this but many homemade machines can't run that fast so we need to slow things down. But even that may be a problem. If I want to half the feed rate to 70 inches per minute I could half the spindle speed. That's okay for a water-cooled spindle, but slowing a router might be a bit of a problem. Fortunately, there's a simple solution to this problem. If I change the cutter to a single flute bit, a single flute cutter with the same chip load running at 10,000 RPM has a feed rate of 70 inches per minute. You can see here the relationship between the number of flutes a cutter has and feed rate it should run at for a given chip load. The more flutes a cutter has, the faster the feed rate. That's why people who use three and four flute cutters on their machines tend to burn their way through the stock. These cutters are designed for milling machines which cut metals and have spindle speeds of about 1000 RPM, not 20,000. So now it's time for a reality check. Unless you're doing production runs, you have no real way of actually measuring tool life unless you are clearly burning or breaking your cutters. I want to get good results and I want to get reasonable life out of my cutters. But a lot of cutters I use are cheap Chinese router bits with no name and of course no data sheet. The best I can do is guess. As I gain experience cutting the various materials, I can amend my feed rate to get better results. By listening to the machine while cutting and checking the chips, observing my finish on my cut, I can get an idea of how things are going and adjust feed rates on the fly. I like to start with a spindle speed of 10,000 RPM and a feed rate of 100 inches per minute. I then increase and decrease my feed rate until I feel the cutter is cutting correctly and I'm getting the finish I want. After that I can note down the settings used for that material and use those figures for future cutting. Now when I started doing this video I thought the obvious thing to do was to have a look for an app. But finding one for a hobby CNC machine cutting wood was harder than I thought. Most of the ones out there are for cutting metals and a lot of them cost quite a bit of money. I persevered and I found two that I really think are worth having. They're both free available for Android and iOS and I've been testing one of them for a little while now and it seems to work really well. The first is called US Router Tools. It has a built-in generic chip load chart. They appear to be based on this chart here from Vortex Tools. Every material and chip load shown in here are exactly the same as on the app. If you can find data sheets for your cutter, then use that to calculate the speeds. But if not, this app is a good starting point and really easy to use. Simply select the material you're machining from the drop down menu, select how many flutes your cutter has, enter the speed you will run your spindle at, and press calculator go down to the tool diameter you'll be using and across to see the suggested feed rate. Please bear in mind that these are suggested feed rates and are a good starting point but don't take it as gospel. Use your own judgment, look and listen. Remember that wood is also very forgiving so don't sweat it too much. You've got time once you start cutting to see how things are going. Now, 
make sure that you read this here in combination with the app so that you understand better how to use it. I'll put a link on my website to where you can find this document on the Vortex website. So in the example we looked at before, if I'm cutting MDF with a two flute quarter inch cutter, then I should be running my machine at between 260 and 320 inches per minute. It matches my personal observation for the quarter inch up cutting bit I've been using for years, which was a bit of a surprise to me. It made me feel a bit happier about how I go about setting my feed rate. The feed rate's calculated for my 1 8 bit also matches my personal observations. Now the second app I found is from Vortex Tools. It's quite interesting. It has built-in calculators with chip load, feed rate and RPM. And also does metric conversions. In addition to this, it has a tool selection guide. You select material that you want to cut, the power of your spindle, the tool diameter you want, the material thickness and the type of cut you'll be doing, and it will recommend one or more tools to use along with its part number. You can then look at the tool spec along with the recommended chip load for your job. From there, you can go back to the calculators and work out feed rate that suits your machine. From the app, you can email them for further assistance, or if you're using the app on your phone, you can even give them a call. This is the way a router bit app should be in my opinion. I'll be keeping both on my phone and tablet so that I have them handy as a reference guide when it comes to choosing feed rate. Maybe one day I'll order some cutters from them and see how they go. Now the one thing you can see from this is it's important that your router has speed control, but not all speed controls are created equal. Spindles and other induction based motors have a natural tendency to retain constant speed throughout a range of loads. And of course, spindles have the VFD drive as well. Likewise, the Super PID system I used to run on my router uses optical feedback to track router speed and adjust the power to the router accordingly. Both of these systems are ideal for the business end of a CNC machine. Pulse width modulation based speed controls on the other hand, while they slow your router down, don't keep a constant speed under load. The upshot is, if you adjust the cutter speed to be fast enough when cutting in a straight line, when the machine slows down to round a corner, the cutter will speed up because the reduced load and burning may result. Likewise, if you adjust the speed, of the cutter to be correct for the corners, you might break the cutter on the straight when the machine speeds up and the cutter slows down under the increased load. The trick with one of these is to try and find a happy medium, but it should be noted pulse width speed control is better than running your router at full speed. I don't know how well built-in speed control regulates its speed on a router, because unfortunately I don't have one to test. So now you know the proper way to do it, how I do it, and that there's an app you can try out. There's no excuse for running your router at 20,000 RPM with a four flute cutter, crawling your way through the stock, leaving a cloud of smoke in your wake. How you ultimately decide to set your feeds and speed, I leave entirely up to you. So long as you're happy, that's all that counts. Well, that about wraps it up for this week. Why not check out my website, www.cncnuts.com, or click on the link in the description box below. You'll be taken straight to the article associated with this video. All that remains for me to do is to thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and hit that little bell symbol next to the subscribe button to ensure you're notified of new videos as they come out. Have a good weekend, and I'll catch you guys later. Cheers.